You know I'm hand wiring a lot of my keyboards and today I wanted to show a bit more about this stuff that can create keyboards from scratch. I will talk a bit about which things you can do with hand wiring and which things are only possible with hand wiring and how to get started for your next build. Also, as always, I got download links for all the stuff I do here in the description below. I got into hand wiring on my first keyboard build, the Dactyl. This board cannot use standard PCBs because of the curvature of the columns. And the only way to build this without ordering single key PCBs or custom flex PCBs is hand wiring. Because of the curvature, this is a quite nice wiring experience as you got plenty of space on the backside to route the wires around the keys. Quite ideal as the first build. Macro pads are also a great thing to hand wire when getting started. My macro pad cases can be used with the 3D printed hot swap sockets or simply soldering them together. But what do we even connect together and why? The simplest way is the direct pin method. Here every switch gets connected to a data pin and on the other end to ground. This has the advantage that you don't need to add diodes at all, but you need at least the amount of switches you have as data pins on the microcontroller, as the Pro Micro only has 18 you're limited to very small keyboards. This is where matrix wiring comes in. Here each pin gets assigned a column wire and a row wire. Each switch now also gets a diode to prevent ghosting. For example, multiple key presses making it undetectable where each key press originated from. This allows on the Pro Micro for a maximum of 9x9 or 81 keys. If you need more keys, you can take a look at IO expanders or other microcontrollers, like the Teensy 2 which has 44 pins for up to 484 keys. That should be enough. And that is what we will use right now to build a 100% keyboard with hand wiring. Like I said in my last video about the 60% keyboard, this time we will print the plate separately to make it easier to prototype. The whole plate was printed in three parts, because my printer is not nearly large enough to fit everything in one piece. And then the pieces just get melted together with the 3D printing pen. This actually worked very well, so I will use the same workflow for the case parts. After inserting all switches and stabilizers and doing a test fit for the keycaps, I'm using linear Gateron Reds with this build, as I was quite happy with those in my last keyboard build. This time it was very convenient to have the case and the plate separately, and to just work on the plate when soldering. Then I soldered the columns with normal copper wire, and for easier routing bent the diodes upwards, then connected those together as well. Take care to align all of the diodes the same way. I ended up using enameled copper wire for routing the columns and rows to the microcontroller, as this huge board needed a lot of wires. Some of the wires are secured with a 3D printing pen to at least give some order to the 6x21 behemoth of a matrix. The bottom plate was then covered in some soft fabric to dampen the internal sound echo at this size of a keyboard. The case then clamps around the plate and keeps it securely in place and then gets screwed together from the bottom and the magnetic bottom plate attaches to the case from below. Before assembling the case, I added a rewritable NFC tag to the inside so that information about this keyboard can be stored on it, like the switches that are used and the microcontroller. As I'm giving away this board to my brother, he can now hold his phone next to it and get information about the board. One thing I wanted to test is how the 1.5mm plate affects the flex of the board, as I can add support strips on the back of the plate to reduce the flex. I just added a few of these and the board has a quite substantial flex to it without breaking even with very hard key presses. Remember, this board only has the PLA plate and no PCB, so we could design these properties exactly to our liking, but this would require some more testing from my side. The best part about the hand wiring is you can build whatever layout you like, and only need to prepare a plate with a keyboard layout editor and KBD plate that you can then easily 3D print. Now is the time that you can easily start with creating your own ideas and build working devices in a matter of days. This build for example took about a week from the time I started with the design on the keyboard layout editor to the typing finish keyboard. If you want to discuss your ideas or want more input on your projects, feel free to join my discord server. I'm also a big fan of the open source community aspect, so as always, all files for this build are available on my GitHub page. This includes the firmware, STL files, and the Fusion 360 and Step source files. If you want to see how I go about creating and working through such a build, check out my Twitch, where you would see the work in progress states of all these builds. 
Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and have a good day.